Hi, my name is Joe. This is the IB camera. Like all other electricity products, you also need a power source. In this video, we're going to go through all the possible methods to power the IP camera. It's included DC, PoE power over Ethernet, even if you mentioned the solar panel. Okay, now let's move to the workshop. The first method is using a power adapter to power the IP camera. This is a DC 12 voltage power adapter. It looks quite similar as the power charge with our mobile phone. In order to use this power adapter, we need to have the AC outlet available at the edge. So I just need to plug this power adapter to the AC outlet, then connect to the camera. So the camera can get the power source from the AC outlet. It's quite simple, right? But the one thing you will realize, you need to have the AC outlet in each of the IP camera. Sometimes it's impossible. So we will go to the method 2, PoE power over Ethernet. If we look close to the system, we can find there's an Ethernet cable coming through the router and to the camera. Actually, in the typical IP camera system, you should have the Ethernet cable to each of the camera. So now we are going to take use of this cable and send the power through this cable to the camera. In this case, we will need the PoE injector. So the PoE injector can add the power to the cable and going, going through the camera. Okay, now first let me just remove the cable from the router and connect to the PoE port of the PoE injector. At the back side, we also can see the power source port. So it's going to connect to the AC power. We also, I also need this short punch code to link this PoE injector back to our router. We just remove the cable from the router, so now we need to link it back. This is the PoE switch. You can see there are totally eight PoE ports. And the PoE switch also needs a power source, which is quite similar as the PoE injector. So first thing, let me just power this PoE switch by using this AC power code. And now I can remove the cable from the router and connect to one of the PoE ports. So the PoE switch is going to send the power to the camera. Meanwhile, I also, also need to use this short punch code to link the PoE switch to the main network, which will be the router in this case. You can see when we use the PoE injector, one PoE injector only can handle one IP camera. But while we use the PoE switch, we can handle more than eight cameras by using this single switch. I think you also may realize there are some Ethernet port in this NVR. That will be the next method by using the PoE NVR to power the IP camera. If your NVR has built-in PoE switch like this one, usually you can see the additional RJ45 port at the rear of NVR. We also can use the PoE NVR to power the IP camera directory. Now let me just remove the cable from the router and connect to one of the port. And you can see the indicators on, which means the PoE NVR is supplying the power, also the data, to the camera. So what is different between the PoE NVR and the PoE switch we talked before? We will talk about this in the next video. The last but not least is the solar panel system. We also can use this solar panel system to power the IP camera. You may wonder why we need the solar panel system. After all, we already have the cable sending both power and data to the camera. Imagine, if that's the application, you are unable to wire the cable. Let's say there's a between the switch and the camera. That's not possible to wire any Ethernet cable. In that case, we can use wireless bridge. So the solar panel system can come up. Or you have the fiber optic cable. The fiber optic cable can send up to 10 km distance between the camera and the router. In that case, we also cannot send the power so, so long, so long distance. So the solar panel system may come up to play it. In the next few video, we will talk about how to use the solar panel system to power the IP camera. Alright, that's all for today's video. If you have any questions, please post comment section below. See you next time.